Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today I want to show you how to take an Adobe InDesign layout and convert it into a stunning HTML5 digital flipbook using the platform Flipsnack. In this lesson, I'm going to go over how to use the bookmarks as well as buttons and forms panels. And I'm also going to show you how to publish your flipbook online. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is build out our index page, which we will link the buttons to sections in this fictional home decor magazine layout, which consists of 10 pages overall. So I'm just going to pull some images into my placeholder frames here that I've already set up. I'm just going to click and drag from my desktop right into the specific frames and you can see they'll drop right in. So there's four here and I'm just going to drop them right into each frame. I guess I could have done them, carried them all over together and then just dropped them in that way as well. Either way works. I have some, some text here that I'm going to bring in uh, as the index headlines and then we're going to go ahead and format them. I've created some paragraph styles. I'm just going to zoom in here and I'll just drop each one in. So I went ahead and created some paragraph styles in advance. So I'm just going to highlight each headline and go to my properties panel and in my basic paragraph drop down here, I can select my paragraph styles that I've went ahead and, and created. So home decor is the index header. I'm going to click that. I'm just going to place my cursor in each one and make them index header. And I always encourage you to go ahead and make uh, paragraph styles as you're working, um, especially if you're working in, you know, layout design or editorial design, this will help you save time as well. So I'm just going to click that last one. And I have little pieces of information or teasers for each box. So I'm going to drop those in. And so I went ahead and created a paragraph style for these as well. Index caption. And so I'm using one typeface throughout this entire layout. And it's called Canela. So I'm just using different weights uh, throughout and either bold or italic, depending on how I'm using it. But it's pretty much the same font throughout. I have a little sidebar here with the contributing team or the, the managing editor and the writers and the photographer for this publication. I'm just gonna highlight that. And I called this one Contributor's Body. So that fits nicely. The headline here is going to be Design Collection. I'm just gonna put my cursor in there and this one's called Main Headline. Oops, let's select all of it. Main Headline, you can see that's a beautiful typeface. And then, so let's just grab the intro text, the little preamble and this one is uh, body text, good. So there we go, we've just set up our index page and now we can link the buttons to the specific sections in this layout. So for instance, home decor, I'm gonna create that into a button to go to the page four home decor story okay or the article and then the other buttons with the corresponding uh, sections in this magazine so there are two interactive panels that we'll be using primarily for this tutorial they are the buttons and forms panel as well as bookmarks to get to those two panels go up to window interactive bookmarks and then window interactive buttons and forms they're in the same area and one is above the other so open both those up, tear them off in another window like I've done here. And let's start with bookmarks first. And so we have to set bookmarks so that when we click the button or convert these into a button, it will jump to a section, a destination in this layout. So for instance, let's go to page four. And now that I'm on page four, I can bookmark page four. And all you have to do here is make your way down to the right hand side of the bookmarks panel. Click the little icon to create a bookmark and let's call this home 
decor. And again, renaming them will help you when you're setting up the buttons, they always do. Okay, so let's go on to page six and let's create another bookmark here that will be called living space. Let's go to page eight, create another bookmark. This will be called workspace. And then finally on page 10, create one more bookmark and let's call it dining room. Great, now we can go back to our second page. And now that our bookmarks have been set, let's go ahead and click on buttons and forms tab. And I'm just gonna zoom in here so we can see and get a closer look at how to do this. So I'm gonna click on my first image and I wanna turn that into a button. And let's call this home decor button. And the action we wanna set is for it to go to a destination. And the document is the name of your uh, document name. So this is called lookbook. And I'm gonna leave it at that. And instead of dining room, there are all the bookmarks, bookmarks that I've set up. So this one's gonna be home decor, okay? And let's click on the second one and do the same thing. So create it into a button and let's call this living space button. Go ahead and create a destination, set the action to go to a destination. Leave the document as the main document that you're working on. And this one will be living space. You could see why renaming those bookmarks will help you. If it was just bookmark one, two, three, four, you'd just be kind of guessing. So always rename and that will help you as you're working. Go ahead and click the workspace uh, image there. Go ahead and turn that into a button. Workspace button. Click on the plus sign to set an action to go to a destination and change the destination to workspace. And then finally, click on the last one, change it to a button. This is dining room button. Click on the plus side, go to a destination. And let's change the destination to dining room. Or actually it's already set up as that, so leave it, leave it at that. And then let's go ahead and add a rollover effect to these buttons so that when we publish it to our flipbook site, um, you can see that we'll, we'll have some rollover effect on this as well. So I'm just gonna click on the first one and down below here in the appearance, let's click rollover. With rollover selected, make your way back up into the image, double click to drive into it. Go to the properties panel and change the opacity to 50%. So you can see now you have a normal appearance and a rollover appearance, okay? So that's good. Let's do the same to the, to the rest of the, the images. So click on the first one, go down to appearance, click rollover with rollover effect in effect. Go ahead and double click to drive into that selection and in the opacity, change that to 50% and then click on normal again. Click on workspace, the image, and then click rollover. Double click to drive into that selection and change the opacity to 50% and then change it back to normal. And then finally click on dining room, click on rollover, double click on the image to drive into that selection. You'll know that you drove into it. Right now you see a dashed border. If I double click, it's a solid border. Now I'm driven into rollover. And what I can do now is change that to 50% opacity and make my way back up to normal. And there you go, those, those are all set up now. So now that we've set up the button structure, let's go ahead and export this as a quick interactive PDF prior to uploading it onto the Flipbook site to see if the functionality is properly working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make my way up to File, Export, I'm just gonna save it into this file here and change it to Adobe PDF Interactive. And I'm just gonna hit save and replace. 
and that's good I'm just gonna hit export if there's overset text don't worry about it just go ahead if you're just practicing anyways don't worry about it. if this was a real document that you were working on then obviously double check where there would be overset text so that's just generating it's exporting um, it's a pretty big file because I have quite a few images on this um, on this layout but once it opens we can test it out and see if the button structures work so with the interactive PDF open I have it open here in Acrobat Pro DC there's the front cover let's go to page 2 the rollover effect works on all four images let's go ahead and click on home decor it takes you to the home decor section let's click on living space it takes you to the living space section with the article and images click on workspace there's the article for workspace with the image and then finally dining room that takes you to the last article in the layout so now let's go ahead and publish this on Flipsnack and see how it looks as a digital flipbook. So I'm now on flipsnack.com. This is one of the few platforms that can hold InDesign interactivity as simple as page buttons creating a navigation structure and it carries over to this platform which is nice. It also holds the rollover effect that we've set up as well. So flipsnack.com is the website. Just create a quick account. I believe you can sign in with Google. So I'm just going to go to my flipbooks in the top right hand corner. Now I don't have any flipbooks at the moment, but let's go ahead and upload the one that we just exported. Now I should let you know that when you export for this platform, export it as single pages rather than spreads. What this site does, it converts it for you into a spread um, in the in the flipbook. So I'm just going to drag my file right into here and it will take a few moments to upload. So you can see now that my PDF has uploaded and it's going to open up once you hit next. It brings you to this interface where it's now converting your, your pages, your PDF pages into this HTML5 digital flipbook, which is kind of cool. So it does allow you to have a free account with some limitations, but you, you can upload, I believe, believe up to three flipbooks um, with a free account. So you can see that we can go through it like so, just by clicking these arrows and then work your way back. But you can also click on these individual pages to go to those specific sections and then work your way back. And you can see that the rollover effect does still take place in this format. Do you see that it, it, it carried it over, which is really cool. What I did as a final step is create the cover as a bookmark as well. And I created these little icon logos into buttons so that let's say you're on page two and you want to go to page 10, but you don't want to keep clicking this arrow, left arrow to go all the way back. I mean, you can, but let's say you just wanted to close the book. I created little buttons out of these icons as well to take you back to the cover. So regardless, if you're on page 50, you can set up buttons on the icons or the page numbers or wh whatever you whatever you want really I just thought it would be pretty convenient to have them on the logo in the folio up top on the magazine so whatever page you're on you can just close the book so that's how you take an InDesign layout and convert it into an HTML5 digital flipbook if you enjoyed this tutorial if you found it helpful go ahead and give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified each and every time a new video is uploaded. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.